Hey everybody and welcome to Virtual TrekCon with Sirach Lofton, of course. Hello, hello. We are joined by Miss Michelle Hurd. How are you? Hi guys, how's everybody doing? Awesome. Uh, doing great. Doing better now that you're here. Yeah. <laughs> so Michelle Hurd plays Rafi in Star Trek Picard and uh, Sirach and I do a show called The Seventh Rule and we reviewed every episode of Picard and I'm pretty sure we wore each other out with how many compliments we kept giving about you. Oh. Uh, like nonstop, you were absolutely a standout actor mm. on the series and we were just absolutely had to have you, you know, here to talk to you. Mm. So thank you That's for- That's very kind. Thank absolutely. you for saying that. That you means are, a lot to you're, me. you're an amazing actress. Love your performances. Love oh, the way, you. love you on the show. Uh, strong woman. Um, mm. Tell us about your experience yeah. coming on. You know, yeah, you know, it's been an amazing experience, I have to say. Um, and for anyone who, uh, you know, loves Picard, loves Patrick Stewart specifically, he is exactly what you hope he would be. He could not be kinder, um, more generous, more um, encouraging, uh, funny, self-deprecating, a team player. Um, you know, he really, he really just welcomes us and makes us feel like we're all part of the same group, this, this ensemble. Um, and as far as Rafi, you know, I, I, when I read the breakdown for the character, mm. I was so drawn to it. You know, it, I'll tell you a little backstory. I, I actually um, had to have foot surgery, <laughs> random. I had to have foot surgery from, I've uh, uh, been a martial artist since I was a teenager. And back in the day when I was doing karate, my dojo was a concrete dojo. It wasn't all the cushy, soft stuff that we have today. They were just like, work, <laughs> get on the concrete, punch a wood wall, you know, like my maki water pads were wooden, you know, well, you know, yeah. deal. Um, so I had, I've broken a bunch of bones in my foot and uh, I just needed to have a surgery. And I got, uh, I was in New York and I got this email at like 9.30 PM for a self tape the next day. And I'm, you know, I'm lying there getting ready for surgery in, in the morning. And I literally send off an email. Sorry, sorry guys, I'm not going to be able to do it. I didn't tell my people that I was getting a surgery because in this industry, you just don't want to say anything. It's so silly, but you don't want to say anything because people will be like, oh, she's out of, you know, she can't be um, submitted for work. So I, I, I sent off a quick thing saying I can't do anything tomorrow. And then I thought, be a good actress and read, you know, read the whole email. So I started to read the whole email. And I read the character breakdown because it doesn't say Star Trek. You know that it would say it said sure. something like drawing room or something. So I'm yeah, reading that's what it the was, yeah. character breakdown and I and drawing room now. Yeah. And and it was so uh, so thick, so full. You know the 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 fact that she was um, haunted by regrets. The fact that she um, you know has these crutches that she leans on. Um, that she uh, is trying to do her, her best, but she is not um, at a place where she can perform at, at her optimum. And then I read the sides, which were 11 pages, by the way, 11 pages. Mm -hmm. And they, they were just so good. It was so good. And I'm like, what is this? And so then I, I read who the producers were, said Alex Kurtzman, said, you know, uh, probably Akiva, and then said Patrick. And I was like, wait a second, wait, 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 hold, hold, hold a second. I think this is, this is something other than drawing room. This is that. <laughs> so I like, I send an email off to my people. I said, you know what, I can't do tomorrow, but if we could, you know, if they can extend the window to Monday, I'll do it over the weekend because I'm still not telling them that I have surgery. And they're like, sure, no problem. So Thursday, I go have the surgery for the foot. Um, I come home, you know, I'm on like oxy. <laughs> I'm just like loopy. I check my <laughs> emails first, which is kind of funny. <laughs> and I check my emails and again, and they say, sorry, honey, we need it in tomorrow. So now, Thursday, I have 11 pages. I've just come back from the hospital and I just say, you know what? The character is too, um, just too glorious for me not to, to try. Uh, so I like ingest 11 pages of dialogue. Um, Friday, I wean myself off the oxy, which by the way, if anybody's had foot surgery, it's like foot surgery is unbelievably painful. So it was like, mm. I was in excruciating pain. But I wean myself off. My husband, who's an actor, um, set up the cam a uh, little you know iphone we did two takes i i liked the beginning of the first take i didn't like the end of the second one i i didn't like the beginning of the second one but i liked the, the end of the second and i i just literally because i couldn't get it together i said just just send those off i can't i just can't figure it all out and um i'm i'm so thankful and appreciate i did because i got such great feedback from uh you know michael chavon from my producers 
Um, they really loved my take on Rafi. And um, just by watching those two takes, they, they offered me the job. And uh, it has to be one of those moments where it was meant to be because I, I feel like of all the characters I played in my almost 30 years in this industry, and, and mind you, I've always chosen to have strong women because I'm a woman of color. I really want to be, um, I want to represent us well. I want to show, uh, as well as being a biracial child, I want to show these like all different kind of mixy people that we are here, that we're valid, that we um, can contribute and we can look like this, you know, and, and be employed. So I've always tried to make sure that the parts I've taken, you know, are, are ones that are of a learned person, an educated person, a strong person. Um, I always used to joke. It's really weird, I have to say, because this is, you know, our climate right now with um, with police and all that is is uh, is complicated. Because back in the day, I always used to say, if it's a role, you know, if it's a role um, that I'm choosing between someone who wears heels or carries a gun. I'll take the gun every time. Um, and now I have to really question how I, how I, mm. I think about that, right? Because mm -hmm. we have sort of allowed um, some types of entertainment to, um, I'm being careful right now, <laughs> to um, <laughs> celebrate or not celebrate, but to make the police officers always the heroes. Mm -hmm. And um, we really need to, to uh, um, examine how we, um, how we tell those stories now you know, both sides of the stories. But all that to say, once I got this one, I, I didn't realize how much the ingredients that was missing was the vulnerability uh, of human, uh, um, human beings, the, uh, um, that we have faults, that we're perfectly imperfect, that we can make mistakes, um, that mistakes can haunt us, uh, and that we try to, you know, um, to fix those mistakes and yet we can still have regrets whether we were able to or not. And I loved that. I really loved that because I wanted to show that we all go through that. We all struggle. We all have these demons that can sit on our shoulders sometimes. And it doesn't mean that we're useless and that we should be written off and forgotten or ignored. It only means that perhaps some people could take the time to slow down and reach out and, and help our fellow neighbors and our loved ones who are struggling. Um, addiction, any type of addiction is, um, is a beast, you know, and it's there for a purpose. It's there because we're in pain and we're suffering and we're trying to mm -hmm. wake up and, you know, get out of bed. And sometimes you, you, you reach for that thing that's not the healthiest, but it, it, it gives you some kind of um, false feeling of strength. And so you can get up and, and reach, you know, meet the day. So. I felt like this was a, a really um, a really important story and, and to put that in the world of Star Trek, you know, to put that in a world where for myself, I don't know about you guys, but for myself, uh, Star Trek has always been a show that was welcomed in my house. Uh, my mm -hmm. parents are um, activists. They were activists in my father's past. Um, but, you know, we grew up um, in a, at the time where my dad was walking with Dr. King. He set up uh, fundraising um, uh, cabarets. It was called Cap Matinee for Freedom with Maya Angelou, my father, and Godfrey Cambridge. And they would come together with other Black actors in New York, and they would sing and, and do monologues and all stuff to, to raise money for Dr. King's marches. So I'm, you know, I'm an activist child, and my father really wanted to make sure that if we were watching entertainment, um, it was inclusive. Mm -hmm. It didn't mm -hmm. uh, um, portray, portray anybody in stereotypical ways, uh, all the races. And uh, one of the shows that when we were kids that we would all gather around that my father was happy to turn on was Star Trek because it's, it's about all of us. Was it original series reruns or was it Next Generation? Well, it was original series reruns. I don't need to date myself, but <laughs> yeah. Way reruns. <laughs> Way, you know, they were reruns, reruns, reruns. Second, third, batch. Third, fourth, I mean, I didn't yeah. even know. Five, six, eight. That's batch. right. Thank you, thank you, my brother. <laughs> um, but my eldest sister, Denise, uh, I'm, there's three girls in the family. I'm the, the baby, it's uh, Denise, Adrian, and Michelle. And Denise has always, with my father, has been a diehard Star Trek fan, um, OG, from the beginning to end. Like, so she, she was the one who, like, when I started to tell her about the possibility that we do this job, lost her cookies and was just like, <laughs> whatever you do, you have to get this job. And when the comic book came out, she actually went 
to all the different comic con uh, comic book stores in Manhattan and basically like tracked them down and then was like, the next time you get on this issue, call me. You call so, me. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a question about the scene that you were auditioning for. Is it the scene that yeah. we saw you where, where uh, Picard goes to the trailer in the middle of the desert to, to mm. talk to you? Yeah. Is, that the, is that the scene? Yeah. You know, I it's think. basically that scene. They, there was a, a few other things that were kind of stuck in there. Um, it was kind of like the scene where he comes to me and then also when I'm at the rock, when he comes over to me when the, we're at the rock mm -hmm. and I finally say, I, I do know a... a um, Mm -hmm. uh, captain yep. for you it was basically those two together with some other things sort of in there as well but it was it was delicious i loved it i mean it was there was a a whole thing about the bottle like the you know his his vintage the when he brings me that bottle that yeah. she's struggling to like while she's talking to him she's trying to open it and she's like oh just open this thing what is it titanium and i just loved like the kind of the funniness and, and the seriousness that she would do it and that she's kind of quirky and that she runs by her own rules. So yeah, it was, it was those, um, those two scenes that were the audition ones. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember uh, with, if there was a specific word or two in the breakdown that, you know, in the description of the, the character that where you just said, oh my God, that's, you know, or do you, is it all right. just kind of a haze or do you remember any specific words that right. really kind of jumped out at you? It's a bit of a haze. I think it's kind of strange, but I, I, I honestly think it was whatever the words were, the in the description, the um, description that uh, the ba basically the fact that it wasn't a perfect character. There was right. something about the description that I really liked that it was that she was flawed, that there the that she had. Yeah, that she was flawed, that she was haunted, that she had regrets. Um, I just liked that, um, but but also they said she's incredibly intelligent. She was a you know she's a genius hacker. She's a systems you know a a analyst you know genius, and I love that kind of thing that she was really smart and really capable and and high functioning, but mm -hmm. that she was flawed and that she had chinks that were visible. Um, I, there, there, I think it was just that that kind of combination because you just don't always get that. You know, it's usually a very um, you know, we need you to be, you know, she's strong and really intelligent and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Know, that's boring. <laughs> real generic, real basic. Real generic, exactly. Yeah. Is, mm -hmm. Was addiction part of the description? Like any kind of addiction or was it, that anywhere in the description? They had, yeah, they had, um, actually that's uh, interesting. They had Horgel in the scene, which was my Horgel. Um, mm -hmm. And then they had the wine. And I, when we got into this, you know, when I got the job and I started talking to everybody, um, I remember saying, to Michael, to my producers, um, that I really wanted to make sure that if we were going to do this, you know, that she has an addiction, I didn't want it to be one or, or the other. Like, I didn't want her to just be an alcoholic or, you know, to be addicted to her horrible the plant. Um, because I, uh, those two things, this is my take. Whenever we see people drinking wine nowadays, like in the in movies or whatever, everything's fine. You have a, you don't really project anything on that person, right? If okay. you see someone maybe smoking pot or something, you instantly project, ooh, that's a low life. That's a drug addict. They, they don't got no kind of, you know, standing in the world. And I thought that's wrong because we, there's more uh, deaths that can happen from alcoholism than there is from, um, you know, marijuana, right? So I, wa I wanted to make sure that we had this kind of, um, that she has a balance, you know, she has a science of how she does this. It, it's kind of like that movie um, that Denzel Washington did where he he's, uh, you know, the plane and he has to, land the plane and oh, yes, yes. upside down and he's yes. an alcohol, whatever, an alcohol and coke or whatever. But I thought there was something interesting about that, that he used all these different drugs to get him to a place that he could do that action and that he felt he wouldn't be able to do it without making that um, concoction, right? So I kind of like that idea that she thinks the only way that she can uh, be productive is if she has, you know, like, you know, a couple of glasses of this, a few topes of that, and then she can stable herself. So mm -hmm. uh, I really wanted to make sure, I just wanted to have it to be those two, uh, more than one situ kind of, you know, crutch, so that I'm not just, oh, she's an alcoholic. Yeah. Or, oh, no, she's, she's self-medicating. She's just medicating, yes. finding that zone that, that's exactly. that for her to deal with the emotions. But I also love the fact that you're really forceful and strong uh, yes. In the scenes with Patrick Stewart, uh, who's obviously like this amazing actor, and he's you know comes from so much background with the stage and Shakespeare and everything, but yeah. you are one of the 
strongest people I've seen act opposite him. I mean, mm. you're tough on him. You call him out on stuff. You sometimes you, you know, you're like, "F you, get out of my face." That's right. That's right. <laughs> and 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 I like and I like that because I we rarely see that. Normally, he's always the you know the everybody's a little serving it, and you know, and, and people don't challenge him as hard as you did. Yeah, which is one of the reasons I love Rafi's character because she's yeah, such a strong woman. Yeah, yeah, it's it's neat. I, I really liked how how that developed. And if you, this is how I took it, Rafi and uh, JL. And I apologize for people who don't like me calling JL, but you got to understand, she knows him that way. She knows him that way. Nobody else knows him. That's that our way. thing. That's, why, that's our <laughs> thing. You have a problem with it? I'm sorry. Get over it. That's yeah, go go thing. ask go ask Captain Picard if you got a problem right. with it. He has no problem with yeah. it. So if he don't like, he doesn't mind it, then you should not mind it. But um, yeah. the 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 one of the things about um, Rafi and JL's relationship is that she had, had her, you know, she ha has a lot of stuff that happened in her past. You can get a little window of it when you see her with her son. So you know she hasn't been, she just hasn't done, made the right choices all along her life. So she struggled. When she started to work with Picard, he brought her out. He gave her a safety line. He made her, you know, feel strong and respected. And he basically helped her pull herself out of her original addictions. So mm. she put a lot in him. Right. There was from her eyes, he was um, her boss, uh, her superior for sure. But her friend, her mentor, her father, her brother, her lover, you know, all those things in her mind, because this person saved her. Right. Mm -hmm. And that she believed in, in his in his uh, um, in, in what in his fight. Thought it was our fight. So then when the situation happens with the Romulans and, and he basically resigns yeah he basically is like well i'm, I'm just going to resign and this is something that they were planning like we have to figure out how we're going to save millions of lives and he resigns and then she gets fired i mean it's 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 so um it's so it's such a betrayal you know she just feels so betrayed that she tumbles and spirals back until we see picard come and visit her again um so with all that as her foundation as, as their history you can see why she is not going to just take his word for it. She's already been in her head betrayed by him. He hasn't always stuck by his, his, um, his word. So she's hard on him. She's absolutely hard on him to be, you know, say, I know that you want to do good. Don't wimp out. Don't do that thing that happened before. Let's stick to this. Mm -hmm. And you, if you're mm -hmm. going to have me be part of this, you know, this uh, um, adventure or this, this, this uh, mission, don't let me down again. So I, and I love that as well as the fact that to her, he's her mentor, her father, her brother, her best friend, her, her savior. You know, there's, there's a shorthand when you have a relationship like that. Um, and I love it. And Patrick and I love it. We just, you know, it's great to have that kind of freedom to play with each other on set and to not feel restricted to sort of be like, you know, this way and just sort of like meet eyes and, meet voices and um, yeah. So I'm glad you picked that up because it's, uh, it's something we really, we really enjoy. And I think it's, it's, it's important to see that because we need to, especially now, we need to um, challenge our leaders. <laughs> mm. We need to stay on our, you know, on our leaders yeah. and, and yeah. make sure that they, they do what they said they were going to do. You know, we all follow them because we believed the, you know, story that they told us. So we need to hold our people accountable. Mm. And another thing is with, with Star Trek, you know, it, it now has a legacy of strong, intelligent black characters. Yes. yes. Starting, starting with Nichelle Nichols, yes. um, going over to Avery Brooks, my, my dad, the Captain Cisco. And now we're seeing you carry the mantle and, and, and carry the torch for, for brown people. And, yeah. and just and just being an intelligent person who's confident, who's strong-willed, yeah. uh, who's not afraid. And I think it's important for for you know women of color out there and, and, and all people of color to see those kinds of images of themselves in the future mm -hmm. doing 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 good things. Yes, I, I agree with you one hundred percent. Actually, uh, you know. Nichelle, that was the first time there was an interracial kiss on camera. Right. That was the first time that my father's black and my mother's white, but still, that was the first time that we basically saw our world reflected on television to see, you know, two people of different races kiss. And it was phenomenal. So thank you, Nichelle, for that. 
Um, but yes. yeah, I've, I've made a conscious effort of like even uh, when we had the hair discussion, because this is my hair, you know, that's this all me. And I think, yes. yes, it is. And I basically said for Rafi, I wanted even more. I was like, I want her, I want her, her silhouette to be huge because I wanted to sort of really sort of, you know, sell it, <laughs> you know, to the home base that curls and crazy natural textured kind of funky hair like we do is still alive and proud and loud in 2400. <laughs> yes. But, you know, and it's, it's kind of a funny thing to say, but it's incredibly important because if anybody out there who is not the norm, who is, looks a little different and, you know, um, just is a little bit unique, it's, it's, it's so important to see yourself reflected in society. Yes. You know, I think about my, um, I think about my two nephews, my two beautiful brown nephews, right? They're gorgeous creatures. And I think about myself when I went into school, like first grade, second grade, third grade, whatever, they used to have pictures of the presidents around the, the classroom, you know, and you just sit there and don't, you know, as a little child, it's just sort of subliminal. You're just like, there's a president, so whatever. Now, all I can think about is that my two delicious young brown boys now sit in that room and they see a brown man up there. Mm -hmm. Do you understand how like they have to go pretty far down the list, but yeah. Child, they have to go <laughs> not if they go from backwards. Not That's if they right. start from That's forward, right. they, they start back. right there. Right. <laughs> touche, touche. Yes. That's about. But you know, it, subliminal, like we don't even realize what that impact is. Because whether the teacher says it or not, they see that they, a representation of them, can go far. And mm -hmm. that's what I've been trying to, you know, what I'm trying to create. I'm, I remember going to, uh, like, when I got out of college and having, like, my um, uh, interview at a commercial agency and, you know, to, to be represented. And I remember them saying, oh, well, you know, where do you, where do you fit in? And I, and I was playing dumb. I was like, what do you mean? Where, where do you, what do you mean, where do I fit in? It's like, well, you know, like, where do you feel comfortable? Um, what, what do you, uh, where, who do you associate with? And I know. I know what they were asking. <laughs> you, do you put yourself in a black category or what, where do you put yourself, right? So what was my answer? I said, well, I put myself in the category of a New Yorker because I'm a native New Yorker and an actor. And if you want to know what my strength is, then give me a content, give me, give me some dialogue and I'll bring that to life. That's mm -hmm. who I am. And it was funny because you could see him see, you know, want to ask, but then he had to take my thing because I want to go, you are the one who wants to put me in a category. I am a person of color for sure, but mm -hmm. my, my world is vast. It's, it's vast. vast. Right. And that's what we want to show with our, our children, our youth. If, if they see us in all these different roles and categories and like genres, mm -hmm. then they see themselves represented and they know that they can do whatever. They can be a teacher, a lawyer, a banker, a president, a nurse, healthcare and an actor, you know, you can do anything. But if we don't see ourselves represented, then the struggle to, to enlighten ourselves within ourselves is, is more complicated, right? If it's just there, you know it. If it's not there, someone has to teach it to you. And then you have to hope that you get someone who will teach you that, right? Teach you that yes. lesson. And I love the fact that on our show, Star Trek, you know, Issa, Evan, we're all mixies. They're all mixies, right, you know, and right. that's, you want to go, that's what I'm talking about. I don't just mean this biracial. I mean all, all shades and shapes and sizes and, you know, and, you know, LGBTQ and disabled, you know, I, I, yeah. I, I and we do like, you know, Star Trek, the, the, the phenomenon of this, um, this world that is Star Trek and all of its different shows, we have people of all different um, ilks represented. And it's not like, you know, um, uh, that's the disabled person, or that's the gay person, or that's yeah. the black person. That's it's a not, token Asian guy over there. Do you know? No. We no, don't have them actually little incorporated. Ticket. No, we're Thank incorporated. You. We're part of the story. We're part of the mission. We're you know, there's there is a level playing field in in the world of Star Trek, which is one of the beauties of it. But I wanted to ask you: Have you? Yeah. I know it's still early, but have you? gotten any of the convention experience to see the fans and have you gotten any of that in yet yes i'm uh, you know thankfully i guess because of now we got mm. to experience all that from um our last year and I, I keep joking with my friends i'm like if you if any time you go to you know like your first time going to a comic-con like sdcc do it with patrick stewart it's pretty good <laughs> wow that'll <laughs> help 
the seas open. Like, you know, like, yeah. oh. it, yes. was, it was pretty amazing. But I have to say, and, and you know, then we did this sort of in, incredible um, European tour. You know, we went to Comic-Cons in, in Brazil and Italy and Paris and London. I mean, it was it, amazing, uh, amazing experience. And I have to say, Star Trek fans, you guys are like the best, like carte blanche. You guys are um, warm and welcoming and, and energetic and passionate and really creative. I mean, you're, the costumes, I'm like blown away. Um, but yeah, I, I got to experience that, thankfully, in this last year. And, and uh, my castmates, all of us, we continually say that we're so, we're so thankful and so lucky because um, you could get into some new shows and get a lot of pushback from, you know, the, you know, from the old school fans or whatever, because you're interrupt, you know, you're, you're sort of like, hi, I'm here now. But you, you we never felt any of that. We felt just uh, an embrace and um, a welcoming and, and an excitement. And, um, you know, I, I guess when you're standing next to Patrick Stewart, you know, you just gotta, just gotta sit back and like, take it all in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's yeah. only going to get better for you in the, the second yes. year and the third year. Uh, assuming Rafi survives three seasons. I, 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 I'm assuming she might, but who knows nowadays? You know, people That's die true. on shows That's all the time. True. But <laughs> the, I think that your your fan experiences are going to just keep getting better and better mm. and better. And you're going to see that, yeah, more uh, proof that Star Trek fans are the best they really fans are. in the world. Yeah. It's quite lovely. It's just... Mm. Yeah. And, and, and there's another thing that your character is dealing with, which is something that it hasn't been dealt with before in Star Trek, is uh, your, your relationship with your child, right? It, mm -hmm. it's, like, it's an estranged relationship. It's not, yeah. the, per it's not the perfect mom-son situation. Yeah. This, is, this is something that's a little bit unusual because normally we, we try to do the idealistic ways of everything is, you know, so, so splendid and wonderful. But here you, you all have this challenge of trying yeah. to grapple, grapple with that. Um, yeah. What about yeah, that I, dynamic? I love that. I have to say, cause you know, once again, I, uh, the, I really wanted to show all of the truth of what happens uh, with people who have addictions. Right. And one of the uh, points of view that I think is incredibly important to respect and here is the point of view of the child. You know, as the parent, you, you know, you can say, I've done my work. I, I'm so sorry. I know I was terrible, um, but I'm better now. I did my work. I'm here. I'm here. Let's do this. What about the child? What about the child? You have to hear where the child has, um, has been living, you know, within... Mm -hmm that their parents addiction they lived through the addiction as well they're living through that addiction you know they experience things that you may not have been able to see because you were addicted and to sort of come into that person's life and go i'm better now accept me is 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 another abuse it's another abuse and so i really i love the fact that um you know my son felt that he had to say no you're not allowed back in my life, in my, my new life with my wife and my, my child. Mm -hmm. I don't even know you right now. How can I just trust you because you say you're ready? And, and by the way, if we track it, she's not ready. Because she's, she's just not, not ready. <laughs> she not thinks ready. she is, though. Yeah, she not thought ready. she was ready. She, she thought she was And then she tumbled quite far back. But, you know, I, I just think it's really, it's one of those things that's a beautiful uh, a moment that we can... Um, you know, shine a light on the other side of addiction, which are the people who are, um, you know, enablers and just witnesses, you know, and uh, collateral damage. And, you know, I would almost say that my son is collateral damage because I didn't take care of him. I sort of just like, you know, like a bull walk through that China shop. And then after everything's been, you know, tried to be glued together and put back to put back together, I come and say, I want to walk in the room again. You know, it's, you, you can't, you can't just do that. And I, and I, I hope that um, um, people see the both sides that he's not being, um, you know, selfish or mad and, um, and that she has to understand that there's uh, consequences for the actions that she, that she's taken. Now, anything can happen. You know, she can 
make a choice to keep working on herself and, and working on their relationship. And, and who knows, fingers crossed, maybe in the future they can have a relationship. But I, I, I really felt it was so important for us to acknowledge, respect, appreciate, and, and tell the story of the, the, the children. Because the children are, are part of the story when it comes to addiction. You know, they're part of it. And we have to give them, we have to give them a platform so that they know that they're seen, they're heard, and that their plight was um, um, recognized. Was, was recognized. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 so true, and that's one of the things that I mean. Ryan tells me all the time. I love this Rafi character. She is amazing, and we literally look forward to just seeing your performances because you just eat up the screen and make as we watch you we're like where has where has she been this whole time because she's so talented and yeah. uh, I'm, I'm glad that you're finally getting your 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 credits and you're just due and thank you honey yeah you know that's funny is because yeah. uh i i think what srox alluding to is i was just kind of like wow you know this actual boy, Michelle Hurd, she's really good. Like, she's, she's, and I looked yeah. you up on IMDb, and it's just like a dictionary. Like the, uh, and I was like, oh, I guess I'm the one that's late to the you're party. You're the one that's late. Yeah. I guess I should. Yeah. I should but known. you know, you know, it's what's very true though in that. And thank you for saying all of that, you guys. But it's it's kind of like what Viola Davis said when she um, accepted her award. Um, I think I can't even remember which one it was, but she she said. You know, I thank you for this, but uh, I'm getting this because I was given an opportunity. I was given an opportunity to play this part, which could give me the uh, possibility to get an award. Mm -hmm. There are so many of us who are never given the opportunity to play a part that can even be seen in the world of being considered for an award. You know, I'm so thankful and appreciative of all the jobs I've had. I mean, I, I you know, I'm an actor. I love acting. I love acting. Um, and I honor um, being a really good exposition person. You know, I'm, 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 I'm solid. I can walk on the set. I can spew a whole bunch of exposition and bugger off. I can walk into the, you know, a set and hand number one, whatever the, the most important piece of paper is and then leave. But at a certain point, you start to realize, does this person have a real life? Is this person actually vetted? Like, did anybody decide to, and I can do, as an actor, I can do a whole bunch of work. You know, I can do a whole bunch of backstory. I can, you know, fill the whole thing while I walk in and hand the paper to someone and, and walk, walk out. out. <laughs> I walk out, you know. So, you know, it wasn't until, I think, Blind Spot with Shepard, I started to really get into some, you know, like, she's the mother of, she was trained by the government. She had, you know, so there was all of a sudden more of a life that I could dig down and start using. But man, Star Trek, and I, I, I feel for Star Trek, even the person who is in exposition, they, they have a history and you even see that history. So there's something about Star Trek, there's something about sci-fi that really, um, you know, it's almost like, you know how the uh, Coen brothers, the Coen brothers who do all these beautiful films, they, like every single character in those films are important. From the, uh, the gas room attendant to the, uh, you know, every, the day players, the background, they contribute to create the film. Every single character is, is, is important. And under the world of, of sci-fi and especially in Star Trek, I think everyone who steps up there and says, and has, a, uh, uh, contributes to the energy in the scene is important. And it's a, it's sort of an amazing thing that, um, you know, after all this time, this is the moment where I've finally been giving a, a character who is completely vetted, who has a real life, who has a history, who has a presence, who has a future, who has um, tough choices to make that will impact the story. You know, and, and all of us actors out there, people of color know that those words don't generally come together when you person of color on the set. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, no. I'm, I'm going to impact this story? Yeah. Me? Like each effort so, not just once? Yeah. You know, hallelujah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I mean, it's... Um, it's really an interesting, it's a phenomenon, but it, I think I'm thankful for the words. Um, and all I can say is that uh, for everybody out there who's a writer and producer and all that, directors and stuff, just give us the opportunity. Just give us the opportunity and we may surprise you. We have a lot, you know, we have a lot in here that we've just been holding on and just waiting for somebody to give us the, you know, the opportunity to speak and to give life to characters. 
You know, when we talk with a lot of the writers, um, one of the things that they say is that they watch and observe the characters, the people who play the characters, and that's how it, what informs them to write differently as it goes on. And I, I can only imagine that who you are and the spirit that you are is going right. to is going to inform the writers to give you more to do and alter what it is that they give you to do based yeah. on the background of coming from activism based yeah. on the background that you you know you're this strong powerful intelligent articulate woman that knows what she wants i, I think that's going to play out even more yeah. as we continue to watch this series unfold yeah that was actually one of the things that I, I i i guess we kind of know as actors but we don't really know that that's a truth when michael shaban um, we were just, I love him. I love him. He's got, he holds a special place in my heart. I just love everything about him. And we were talking on set. Even his at beard? Some point. Okay. Even his beard. <laughs> I, he looks like Santa Claus. He looks like a hippie Santa Claus right now with his long hair and his big old beard. Uh, but he said that. He said that, you know, I informed him of mm -hmm. who Rafi is. And it's, and I, I, I wish that actors could really understand that. Because sometimes, you know, we go into rooms if we're auditioning or whatever, and you have this desire to please the person that you're going in for, right? You, you're like, oh, I hope they like what I do. Whereas I feel like if we could, if we could sort of reverse that thinking and just, um, you know, like, who do you think this character is? You, like, who do you think of this character is? Take it in and, and you do it justice for yourself. Like, entertain yourself. Make the choices that you are, you know, going to do, you know, true to yourself. Like, oh, this will be good. I'll, it'll make me entertain me. Because then right. that way you'll entertain them. If we're just trying to entertain someone else and we have no knowledge of where, you know, of what that will, you know, of how that looks. Like, I don't know what you think is funny. And yet I'm going to try to do this. I'm like, he didn't think that's funny. That's because I'm not trying to, I'm trying to please the wrong person. Yeah, you're guessing. You know, like, really inform yourself, empower yourself. And then walk into a situation and, and tell them, you tell them that it's your job. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so you I, own, I, it. I, own it, own it. So yeah, for me too, for me too, at this time in my, in my career, it's an amazing um, bit of information to learn and sort of go, right, that's right. If I'm calm in, in my choices, if I'm informed in my choices, if I'm excited about my choices, they're going to see that and, and trust that I'm going to bring to life more fully a character than they even ha could have realized. So yeah, you know, it's, a, it's a sage advice. Oh, uh, just to add to that, one of the biggest realizations uh, for me as an actor was when I started writing, uh, mm. because before as, a, as an actor, you come in and it's almost like looking on the other side of that table, it's almost like looking at the enemy, like they're judging you, they're, right. you know, you're gonna mess up, that you don't, you don't wanna, you're, you're guessing what's gonna please them, it's almost like, feels like competitive in, in a way mm. and when I started writing and when I was on the other side of that table and now I'm casting people All I right. realized that couldn't be the furthest thing from the truth I'm sitting there rooting for every single actor that walks in you know they're thinking please let this person be the, the person that lets me go to yes. lunch or please let this be the <laughs> one that brings yeah. my my words to life they're not sitting there right. critiquing you and, and going right. mm, they're not saying it right they're just looking for the person of who who's bringing something mm -hmm. or even who's bringing something that I didn't expect. And, the, and yeah. that's, that's such a great realization. Once you know that, that Huge. It, it just kind of unlocks the door and then it does exactly what you're saying, which is, well, I'm going to bring what I want to bring, what I think is funny, what I think is cool because they're going to watch that. They're going to be like, Oh wow. I didn't even think of that. That's brilliant. Yes. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's amazing. It's really, it's an amazing discovery, isn't it? Yeah. It's an amazing because we're all thinking that that's the thing is to please the people over there. And they're just like, could you please, you know, tell me, please be the person I, I, I wrote yeah. for Jane. There's Jane. Yes. You know, perfect. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but if you, if you, if you please yourself, that will end up pleasing the other people. Right. So you have to totally. start with yourself first. hundred percent with what you're doing. We talked a lot about Patrick Stewart, but I, I do want to get in one of my other favorite characters on this show, which is Rios. And I uh, wanted you to, Rios. I wanted to, Yes, I, like, I know. yes, I, I wanted to just give us <laughs> oh a little God, bit him. about about working with him. And, and I love like. him so much. He's like one of my absolute favorite favorite uh, scene partners. We'd often um, end up doing a lot of stuff at the end of the day just because of way schedules were, and people were always like, "Oh, it's an R and R day." 
we are some rock bands. Like, <laughs> yes, yay! rest and relaxation. It's, it's rest and relaxation, exactly. Yeah. We we used to joke that um, from and on any given day when the two of us are on set, we're basically Han Solo and Chewbacca, and we could either be <laughs> Chewbacca or Han Solo. Yeah, I'm not going to guess on that. <laughs> no, it's, it's perfect. Like, I don't mind either way. It's perfect. Because we, we work, you know, they work that way together. They're, you know, the man working. with many accents. I mean, he's got, like, geez, how so fun many. Is that? Oh, they're so good. Oh, my God. Uh, that was the most amazing, you know, episode to shoot. I've never five seen five different that characters. Before. Yeah. It was crazy, and it was so, and he's so good. He's so good. And I found that when we did the actual scene, because we had to do, as you can imagine, him as one character the whole way through shooting all the different things. The other character, you know, every, you know, so we had to do all those things. The whole way so through, each time running the whole scene. Every, the whole thing, each did time. Did you have every stand-ins time. or tennis balls hanging? We had, no, we actually had stand-ins. We had okay. two, we had one, two, yeah, oh, yeah we had, uh, I guess we had four, so we would have, okay. When he'd be one, then they would switch around. And what was so interesting is that when he's each character, Rio, uh, Rafi has a different relationship with each hollow. And it was amazing because like every time he became a different hollow, like I innately just would change how I dealt with him because of how he was dealing with him. <laughs> it was so fun. It was so fun. And, and he's just, you know, I have to say you guys, Santiago is, is just, you know, he's, he's a quiet man. You know, he, he, he's not one of those sort of, you know, talks a lot on set or makes a bunch of jokes. He's, he's, he's quiet um, and forever. This is like, I, I don't think he'll mind, but so cute. Like he'll always um, FaceTime his, his son, Killian. Oh. And just like, he'll be on set and be like, oh, look, Killian, look, here's the control panels or whatever. And, and you just see his light, his face light up. And it's just the most glorious thing seeing him watch, uh, talk to his son. But he and I are just, we just like we just bonded immediately. We knew who these two people were. We knew that they were two um, comrades with the same kind of um, you know feeling that they'd been betrayed by Starfleet, and that mm -hmm. that bonded them. Um, and then the two actors, uh, we just really liked these two characters. We we both loved our characters so much that that made an equal bond to each other. You know, mm -hmm. we were just it was just so equal, and I just. I, we, we just have fun. We, every scene we have fun. We always try to stick in a little joke. There's a scene, um, there's a shot, which I can't believe they kept in. Um, it's, oh, which episode is it? I think it's episode nine, eight or nine or something. It's when we come back from, wait, what is it? We have that tool, that special tool. Oh, yes, the magic yeah, tool. And, right, and as the camera- <laughs> Oh, the yeah, camera the imagination comes, tool. The imagination yes. tool. And as the camera comes, <laughs> yes, I need one now. Um, as the camera comes up to us, we're, we're both standing there. We're both basically wearing beige pants, a black shirt, and we, we basically do like the same moves. We both are standing there like this, and we go like this. And, go, and that was just for us. You know, we both look at each other like, let's do a little something, something, so you could catch that next time. And they kept that. They kept <laughs> and they kept that. it. They kept right. it. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. He's, he's, a, he's a really good one. Yeah. Mm. Well, we're cheering. We're cheering for you. Uh, we love what you're doing so thus far. I think it's awesome. And I also like the fact that each character kind of does have a little chip on their shoulder, a little something yeah. in the background. Even, you know, even Picard himself is starting this yeah. whole show with his own little chip on his shoulder. And That's right. everybody, Rios has a chip, you have your chip. And it's like, it's like the badasses, the renegades or the, the, <laughs> the misfits that are like yeah. coming, coming back for justice. You're going to recognize us and you're going to, we're going to. That's right. Because in truth, that's like, you know, we all have had those moments in time. You know, we've all had these times where we were doing, we thought we were on one path, everything was fine, mm -hmm. and something happened, got us off that path. We're still like, what the fuck? I didn't even just, how did that happen? I was yeah. fine. And, or what, or what know, was I thinking back then? Or what, what was, was I, right. what was, what was, what was yeah. I thinking? Exactly. And I think that's why we call ourselves the Motley Crew. Because each okay. of the characters, yeah, we call <laughs> each other. We've got a little uh, WhatsApp thing of the Motley Crew. It's um, and we all feel that we're perfectly imperfect characters. Everybody has um, issues, which makes us really um, relatable. There's nothing sort of perfect and, and, and polished about any of no. us. Yes. You know? Which I yes. kind of feel like at life, we all experience that. I'm not perfect. God knows. I'm not polished. I mess up, you know, I'm, I'm dyslexic. I get nervous when I read out loud. You know, I mean, there's so many things that go on, but I'm not going to let that hold me back. I'm not going to let that define me. Um, mm -hmm. I, I want to speak it like I, I, I happily say I have dyslexia my sister and I both and we've dealt with it our entire lives and guess what we're okay 
It's okay. You're going to be fine. And truthfully, for those of you who are dyslexic, for those of people who are um, not uh, neurotypical individuals, if you think about it, they have, they utilize their brain in a different way. They expand their brain. We, a neurotypical person may think of like, I know how to go from here to here linearly. Mm -hmm. A person who's not neurotypical may not be able to do it linearly. So they'll have to go all the way around, do all this stuff to get to that same point. That's really creative. That's really impressive. So for all of our brothers and sisters, all our people out there, when you know somebody who has some kind of, you know, difference, you know, they're maybe on a spectrum, they have some, something that's just not the same as everybody else. How about we slow down? We take a breath and, and get into their path, get into their energy, get into their rhythm. There's, a, there's a, a, this bizarre concept that when you interact with someone who's perhaps on the spectrum or has different issues, you want them to hurry up and catch up. Mm -hmm. It's counter. They can't. They can't. So why don't we slow down? Why don't we change our rhythm embrace their rhythm, welcome them into the world that they're, they're here, they're present, they're already here. It's time for us to welcome them all. Wow. And I'm sorry so, about that. I got on the, a soapbox there. No, all, hey, not yeah. at all, that's, that's great. That's what we do here, that's what we do. <laughs> that is kind of what we do. <laughs> uh, before we go, we, we have a little bit of time left, um, but I did want to point out, uh, this is something that we've kind of touched on here or there, about your character. Uh, what really attracted me to your acting specifically is how you emote this vulnerability, this passion, this care. Like there's like mm. an intense love that is emoting from you. Mm. Uh, it's almost like this, it's, it's weird. It's almost like it's like this bubble of passion that's like that lead, that, that you lead with in every scene, in every sentence, whether Rafi is laughing or whether mm. she is binging or whether she's angry, mm. whatever it is, there's still this, this subtle or not so subtle leading that, that has this, this passion, this emotion, um, vulnerability, as you mentioned. And I was just kind of wondering, like, what kind of presence of mind do you put yourself in when you're getting ready to play Rafi in, in whatever scene it happens to be? Is there like, is there a specific thing that you like to tap into or is it just that that's how you are as a person and, and as an actress and I just haven't seen your other work? <laughs> I mean, what, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I <guess. laughs> yeah. um, that's, first of all, uh, I, I'm going to just record that because that was beautiful and I'm going to listen to you say that to me every morning now. Um, <laughs> oh, was uh, I supposed to be recording? Sorry. I'll, I'll start <laughs> talking. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, that's a great, uh, that's beautiful. Um, I think for myself, I, I really try, I really try to be as truthful to the story that I'm telling mm -hmm. as, as uncomplicated as I can make that be right. What, what, what is, what is it that I'm trying to say? What is the point of this moment, this interaction that I'm about to have with somebody? What is it that I want to get out of it? Um, and that's what I, I generally you know, focus on uh, as soon as I'm um, getting ready to start a scene or whatever. Uh, I'm very lucky that I often get to look into the eyes of someone who is equally as generous, um, Santiago, or Patrick. So it's not hard to sort of come to the uh, um, full extent of the emotion because you're, you're really working with somebody right there. Um, and I... I guess it's funny because I, I, I do sometimes, I don't know how, I don't know why, but I do sometimes feel um, a maternal protection over That's my- That's what I feel, yes. Yeah, over my Motley crew, even Patrick, you know, it's, it's yeah. very, I, 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 Michelle, you know, and if it's Michelle, therefore Rafi does as well. I don't know how that happened. I mean, I know that because Rafi is a mother, she has this maternal um, in, in, uh, you know, um, core. Um, because she has failed at some of her mothering. She has a guilt about that. So she's very sensitive um, to make sure that she doesn't do that again as best she can. Uh, and there's, and I think because 
you know, I think that's really what it is. I think because of the pain, all the pain that she's gone through that still lives within her. Um, she's so aware of human vulnerability and fragility and, um, and, and it's really important for her to make sure the people she's interacting with aren't as in pain as she is. I think that's really what it is. She knows her pain so well. It's like when she, they pull her out and, and talk to her friend to get the, um, to get them to give her the S to get Picard to have the escort down to the um, cube, right? She, she's drunk, she's all stuff. And then all of a sudden she's like, hey, it's me, how are you doing? Because she pulls herself out to help mm -hmm. them. She knows that it, this is what she has to do to help them. She may be in such pain, but she's gonna somehow figure out how to, 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 to get over that to help the other people. And by doing that, you know, you can't help but show that your, your vulnerability, your insecurities, your, your pain, your struggle, um, your love, um, your need to help. Um, and all those things are, you know, boy, oh boy, that's maternal instincts for you right there, all of it. So yeah, I think it's trying to be as true to what, you know, she wants to try to do for the people that she, that she loves. You know? Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, that device that you were smoking, was that actually real or? My uh, Corgal? Yeah, did yeah. It, does, does it function? It, it doesn't Actually, really. Or, um, Ciroc, it doesn't really, easy. Hey, easy. I'm gonna give one. What, 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 um, I got three. I'll give you one. He's got three. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I, the horgle that we had was um, it was created by our props people, and it's a beautiful. Uh, the encasement of the vape is is this beautiful. Like that's the thing that's they created, mm -hmm. and then it's just basically a a vape that has mm -hmm. that's just. I don't think there there was nothing in there. I I didn't feel tobacco or anything. Um, so yeah, it's, that's it. And I take my little flower, I put it in cause that's the, the drug and yeah, yeah. no, it's not real. <laughs> oh man. Sorry. That's okay. We can pretend. <laughs> we can imagine it as long as we can yeah. imagine. That's right. Where's that's my right. imaginary uh, that's right. tool? Imagination I'm still tool. looking for my, re I want my replicator and my transporter. I still feel like I have that. It's Which, coming. By the way, it's I, all coming. I will, and I will tell you, yeah, it is. And I will tell you guys that I too, just like all of us, when I sat here in my house and watched myself um, uh, get on the transporter and, and disappear for the first time, I literally, and I shot it. And I literally jumped, jumped up. I was like, ah, yes, I did. <laughs> and I'm like, you shot that. You filmed that. I was like, I know, but look, there it is. So, I just beamed out. I just beamed out. I just beamed out. Did you see it? <laughs> I was gone. Uh, uh <laughs> I'm excited for the journey ahead for you. I think uh, yeah. they couldn't have picked a better person to do the role. And I think you're going to be uh, um, extremely appreciated in, in the long term by the mm -hmm. fans for what you've done and what you're doing. So thank, thank you, you so for, much. for everything. And, and, and I'm glad that somebody who's so thoughtful and so mm -hmm. intelligent is, is able to express what it is that you're bringing to the table so that the mm -hmm. people out there know it's not, it's not haphazard. It's not by accident. This is okay. deliberate and, and right. you know, this is what Thank we are. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're so kind. Thank you. And I mean, Ryan, thank you for reaching out to me so that we could do this in, in the first place. You guys are really awesome. I love what you're doing. I really thank appreciate you. it. You're, you're honest, you big hearted people and uh, it comes through. So I thank you. Sure. Thank you. I, I was thank really you. looking forward to it with our, our correspondence. It, it made it very clear the kind of person that you are. And I would, I, I very much appreciate uh, how communicative you are and how easy Absolutely. you are to talk with. Uh, one final thing is, as Sarah kind of mentioned, we do talk on our show a lot about kind of how like the writers will write for a character in the first mm. season. But then after that season's over and they see everything that happened, the second season, they kind of adjust. They kind of mm. write to the actor a little mm -hmm. bit more you know what i mean yeah and i'm really looking forward to see what whatever these tiny little subtle differences are in the second season for rafi me uh, too <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we're looking forward to that and uh i do want to thank you very much for joining us it's been a great time as absolutely expected thank you um thank you guys. we're looking and, forward you know to and more. also to add to that on a personal note you know for yeah. me my daughter is mixed race, mm. and so she's going to grow up with the beautiful right. curly hair like you. And I love uh, it. 
I'm so happy that she's going to have a great role model to look up to, somebody oh. who's as beautiful and oh. great and good-hearted as you. So oh, keep up you. the good work. We're pulling yes. for you. The fans out here what, love what you're doing. Keep it going. It. We're, we're keeping our fingers crossed that we can get back into production ASAP. That's right. And, and, uh, I love that. and, get, and get some more Picard on, uh, on the menu. That's right. And just so you know, I'm literally the crazy lady that will run across the street if I see a little <laughs> munchkin with curly hair. I literally oh, yeah. run it. I will chase you down then just to say, oh, my goodness, I love your hair. It's so cool. Because no one ever said that to me when I was a little mm -hmm. one. So I'm doing my very best to make sure to empower our youth and to give us, you know, the, you know, give us a voice and a, and a, and a, and a, a visual statue, you know, like a, a representation to show that we're here that we're yeah. supposed to be here, that we're beautiful in all of our shades, our, our physical, uh, uh, you know, shapes, our, sh our, all of it, everything. Yeah. Embrace yeah. it, empower it, own it, be present, you know, help, you know, help your friends, be allies. Let's all be allies for each other. I mean, we can do it. We can all do it. Just yeah. speak out for each other. So, yay. Yeah. Well, we Thank love God your hair, by the way. Platform too. Yeah. We <laughs> love it. We love it. <laughs> you guys right. are awesome. Thank you so much for the love that you clearly have and that you're sharing it with me, and I appreciate it. And yay. That's all I can say. Yay. Yay, 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 yay. back. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you. And uh, we really appreciate it. I uh, hope to see you again real soon. Um, everybody at yeah. home, thank you so much for joining us. Check out Picard Season 2 next Tuesday. Just kidding. It's going to be a long time. But, <laughs> <laughs> but check it I'm out. Like, oh it's going to be awesome, just like the first awesome. season was. And that yeah. theme song, by the way. Right? I love, Beautiful. love, love it. Anyway. And how gorgeous was um, uh, Issa Biona singing uh, Blue Skies yes. at the end? Mm -hmm. Gorgeous, right? Beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. And everybody at home, we'll see you next time. We still haven't come up with a thing to say. No, no I thing, see you guys. Live long and prosper. Ciao. Ciao, Bella. Ciao, Bella. Ciao, Bella. <laughs>